Oh, hi. I didn't see you standing there. You want to come in? You want to see something scary? Hey, sinners, how you doing? You're listening to the Sinful Cuts podcast, the podcast where Sean O'Connor and Shannon Bushman Montalbano break down some of your favorite horror films. We take a look at all the decades, the wild, weird, and wonderful world of horror and all it has to offer. So sit back, tune in, have some fun. Here we go. Hey, sinners, guess what? It is that time of the week again where we record shortcuts. My name is Sean O'Connor, and I have the best co-host in the world, and her name is... Shannon! <laughs> Shannon Bushman Montalbano! I, I feel like after you say those, that your full name, you need to be like, wow, wow, I, I Seriously, wow. it feels like, like a power-up uh, type of a name. It's so many letters. <laughs> and when you say my full name, afterwards you just go, pew, pew. <laughs> So, welcome to Shortcuts, everybody. This is the episode where we take all of the horror happenings for the week and we roll it up into uh, some sort of little gooey, gooey, delicious, dreadful masterpiece. And then we serve it to you with love. Yeah. With black hearted love. Yeah. <laughs> yes, lots of black hearts. That's right. All right. So before we even get into the birthdays, I just want to pause for one second because you had an incredible night last night. Why don't you tell the sinners what you did? Yeah. So we went to, uh, so here on Long Island and, uh, in Bayshore, I think they do it like three times a year. I want to say they, um, they, they do something called the moonlight market. And, and this was really nice because it was, it was such a nice night out. Uh, you know, now we're in June. So they had the whole thing outside and it's just like, you know, it's just a marketplace. There's artists that go, there's authors, there's, uh, you know, people selling the crystals, um, a lot of pot as well for all you weed yeah. smokers out there, you know, a lot of, my friend bought a lot of edibles, <laughs> a lot of, and just eating them like they're candy. And we're like, you know, those are, ed- you know what? Never mind. <laughs> um, Can I get that fr- friend's number later? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but there was a lot of fun things like that. So a lot of fun, interesting people, you know, a little live music, um, you know, just to kind of keep the vibes going. Um, uh, obviously great. food trucks, things like that, but they have one, um, as well. If guys, if you're in the Long Island area or close by or happen to be visiting, um, they do this again as well in October. Um, and they also do like a Krampus themed one in December. That so- one. I'm absolutely going to. I'm definitely yeah. going to hit one in October, but we talked about the we missed it last yeah, year. Yeah, we we missed it last year. I'm not exactly sure when it's happening in October, but if you, I think you can follow them on Instagram. I'm pretty sure it's just uh, probably Moonlight Market, LI Moonlight Market, something like that for our Long Island. So I, t- I forgot. Listen, to I will, I'll do the, I'll do the hard yards on that and I'll find it and I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, I'm like when I find it, I I know I had to find it last night to to get the tickets. Like, uh, you save like five bucks if you get them, you know, pre pre order them. Um, oh, cool! But it's it, it was just super fun. It was just me and the gals, you know, shooting the shit, you know, eating bad food and uh, you know, spending uh, all of our money. <laughs> I love it. I love I two things I love. I love spending my money, mm. and I love. <laughs> Food trucks. I don't know. There's something about a food truck. It's just, I just love it. Yeah. It's, it was so good. You know, my, my favorite one, I just have to put this shout out to this one. Cause this one was hilarious. Gina's Wieners. <laughs> <laughs> that is hot dog I, truck. <laughs> Shannon, we don't have an HR department, but I'm not going anywhere near this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think I figured out why I love food trucks so much. It kind of, Brings you back to the best memory you ever had as a kid, which is getting ice cream out of a yeah. hole in a truck. You know, yeah, like it's like being at like all the like all the, the the country fairs or like the when uh, you know the yeah, it's just a fair. I was I almost said a carousel. I'm like, no, that's one singular thing at a fair. <laughs> My girlfriend like, last night got uh, funnel cake fries. They were they, were they were they were fries and little little funnel cakes. <laughs> That's how magical this place is, sinners. So come to Long Island. <laughs> walk, walk me through this. So it's the shape of a French fry. It's the shape of it's a French fry. Cake. I totally thought she was eating a French fry, and I and I remember because I remember she was saying something like, "Oh, I'm I'm craving something sweet." So when she came back with a French fry, I was very confused, and she's like, "No, no, no, it's a funnel cake fry." And I'm like, "Who's a what's it now?" <laughs> oh, 
sinners, I know this is disgusting, but my mouth is watering right now. <laughs> oh my God. I have to eat that? that? This needs to be in my life. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Funnel cake fries. So oh, I will find you. <laughs> I will find you. Okay. Let, let, let me get us back on track because I'm about to go down a funnel cake rabbit hole. And nobody <laughs> wants that. Nobody wants that. So, okay. You're going to go down a in. funnel, your funnel tunnel. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Two things. I love it when you do that. And I know that there's a small contingency of our listeners who get so annoyed when, when we both do this. And Probably. It makes me so happy. Sorry, not sorry, oh, sinners. <laughs> so happy. Sinners, you mostly get nothing but love from us. So if we can annoy you from time to time, I mean, come on, let us have it. Um, Let's do it. I, I'll just put this out there. You couldn't do it because I think uh, like the grease component to it would probably kill people. Could you imagine if they had funnel cake fries at movie theaters? Oh, you. Yeah. yeah. Wait, <laughs> they should make oh, anything. Yeah. yeah, why not? Right? You already right? have the, the buttery popcorn and the and the pretzels and the nachos. You already have it. Just you're and the candy. You already have it. <laughs> I think I, I think I found the loophole though, or, or the reason why uh, the theater chains don't do it is because can you imagine the poor sixteen-year-old kid who shows up first day and they're like, "Hi, hey, you're working the deep fry for eight hours." <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Covered in burns. Anyway, okay. <laughs> Movies are directly in line with my currently watching because we had. Uh, there's nothing in the theater except for the good stuff that we have in a violent nature. Mm-hmm. Nailed it. I, I don't know why I want to call it the nature of violence, but in a violent nature, <laughs> still still haven't seen it. So, okay, for me, okay, I, that's fine. Yeah, You'll I, get there. You'll get there. You know, <clears throat> I I did. Um, I let uh, adult responsibilities and and work responsibilities get in the way, and I couldn't be more ashamed of myself. Oh. So I'll just put that out there. <laughs> Fair enough. I will. I will see it. Um. Uh, Late Night with the Devil came back to the theaters on June 6th for $6.66, which I think is the most fantastic thing I've ever. Of course, that passed, <laughs> sinners, but this is what I'm talking about. Clever marketing. That's I hilarious. <laughs> I think the first Omen did it as well. They sold tickets for $6.66, and I'm just like, that's, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Right now, William Castle's pounding on his coffin lid. He's like, yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, I will talk about the two movies that dropped on major platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Under Paris, which- I just saw it. Direct, oh, okay, hold, hold on to that for one sec. Uh -huh, uh -huh, so uh -huh. we're going to get into Hot Sharky Summer for a second. But let me talk quickly about Frogman. Frogman, Frogman. Hmm. I want to make sure I got the name Frogman on Screenbox. Okay. I turned this on just as uh, okay. Let you know, not not so much like a folding the laundry, but a folding the laundry kind of movie. <laughs> and here's the best thing I can say about Frogman: that laundry did not get folded. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's always a fun surprise. This I understand why it, this movie uh, started to get like buzz at the festivals. Yeah. Um. It's crazy fun. It's, um, it, you know, it's a found footage movie. So there's a lot of janky camera movements. There's a lot of, you know, you got to follow the thread. It, you know, slowly unravels. But this sweet, sweet faced movie in the third <laughs> act goes to places where you're like, this is so insanely ridiculous. And I couldn't love it more for taking swings. Yay. Okay. It's exactly it's exactly what we were talking about with Jonathan Jans last week, where he's like, I respect a movie that goes for it. That's just yeah. Jonathan, you know, verbatim, that swings out of their cleats. Mm -hmm. And this movie does that. Okay. And I, was, I mean, look, is it going to land for everybody? <laughs> Absolutely not. But I just <laughs> love the fact that it took a, a the swing. Check it out on Screenbox, everybody. Um, also, it just seems like the filmmakers had an incredibly good time making this movie. Um, and it shows. Like, you That's know, awesome. it, yeah, it comes off the screen. So, okay. So, Frogman aside, check it out on Screenbox. Let's, let's talk about Hot Sharky Summer. Yeah. <laughs> right, so what did you think? 
I think we're going to be on the same page. What did you do? Yes. Think? So I, so I did write a review. I, I think I'm going to post it on my social media uh, tomorrow um, at Shannon Von Bushman. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to post it officially tomorrow. No spoilers. So I have to, so I, I basically the gist of the, the review that I wrote though, I, I would say it kind of started off a little bit of cookie cutter. Um, a lot of the middle was just kind of like, okay, like a little, like it kind of goes, a, take a little deeper, you know, just, uh, what do you, what do you, what's the word I'm looking for? Just kind of stagnant a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. It I'll stalls admit, a bit. Yeah. I'll admit the ending surprised me. <laughs> Same. Yes. Same. I was like, oh, 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 okay. 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 <laughs> you know, like kind of where, where was that shock value, you know, like the rest of the movie, but you know, or maybe that was done on purpose. I, I haven't, I didn't look further into it just yet. I usually like to do that before I, before I write a review, but I was in the car, you know, from Pennsylvania three hours. So I was just like, man, yeah, I might as well just write my review now. <laughs> Bang it out. You and I are on the same page. I thought the third act was an absolute banger. Um, it's what you're watching. Oh, a movie <clears throat> that uh, the synopsis is uh, a shark, a gigantic shark, turns out to be a Mako shark in this film. Uh, a gigantic shark makes its way up the Seine into Paris 48 hours before a triathlon yes. where hundreds of people are going to be swimming in the river. Yep. Um, it's a great setup. It takes forever and a day to get to where it wants to go. Yeah. The, the third act should have actually started in, th in the second act. Yeah. And, I mean, all I, when I watched the, the, the movie, I was like, would have cut that, would have cut that, would have cut that just to truncate it. To, yes. And get it and get it going. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of statements in it. You know, there's the environmentalist, there's the scientist in it. You know, there's the cops just trying to fucking do their jobs. The mayor yeah. that doesn't listen, you know what I mean? It's all yeah. kind of like, you know, everything is there. But, uh, but again, I the, the ending that they went with, I was very surprised and delighted. <laughs> yeah, and delighted. Exactly. So I think, I, I, I think Shannon and I give this a, uh, you know, a pretty good, like middle of the road, it's it, it's a good it eventually turns out to be a good movie it takes mm -hmm. a bit to get there don't give up on it yeah. so um sinners no spoilers whatsoever you know <clears throat> maybe like a month down the road we'll get into a discussion on it where we can actually spoil it um but uh hang with this movie sinners oh uh, you just gotta tough it out when you get to the scene where they are in the sharks quote unquote nest with the police and like the um like like the activists, mm -hmm. you're in for a treat. And yeah, then yeah, the movie yeah. just goes from there. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> just get get to the get to the cat. It was in the catacombs. Get get to Once the you, get perfect. to the catacombs, and then you'll be like, ah, okay. <laughs> Once you get to those catacombs, it honestly turns into a completely different movie. Yeah, and it's the movie that it should have been from. Could you imagine if it was ninety minutes of that movie? You know, like yeah. people would be talking about this online right now. Like this fucking shark movie is bonkers great. And, you know, okay. So we get what we get, but it's still pretty good. Yeah. So Hot Sharky, Hot Sharky Summer starts off with, a, you know, not a bang, not a whimper. Just middle of the road. Let's see where yes. we go. To. Yeah. Worth the watch though. <laughs> okay. Um, let's go to books. I got you, something special for you. Do you want to save? Do, do you want to save anniversaries then for last? Oh shit! We <laughs> <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> so, sinners, this is a testament to what a good person Shannon is, and what a good friend. Because I just completely steamrolled over her beginning section, which we've been doing for months. <laughs> And she's such a nice person. She's like, I'll just let this idiot go. <laughs> yes, please. What do we have? I only have two. And these are sure to be, you know, uh, fan favorites because, you know, just because. So I actually have two uh, okay. in both in 1984. <laughs> First one. Okay, good year. Really good year for horror. Re you got really me excited. Yes. Yeah, so this one, you know, will bring you back to, to childhood. First one, celebrating obviously 40 years, like the other one, uh, Ghostbusters. Oh, come on. Come on. Come especially, on. Re especially more relevant now since with, uh, you know, we've now that we have the two reboots out. Um, I 
Got to see the first one. I still haven't seen Frozen Empire just yet. Um, I, I haven't heard, you know, Maybe. like, I heard it took a step down a little bit, but uh, but I have yet to see it for myself. So I didn't see that. But obviously, Sinners, you can always go back to the original because it's always so much fun. I, I will just put this out there. Um, uh, what Went Wrong podcast does a great episode on Ghostbusters. Oh, and nice. um. And, and, and Sinners, the What Went Wrong title can be a little bit misleading. They're just basically talking about the, the production. You know, something always goes wrong in our production. But, oh, yeah. like, some, you know, their whole premise is, you know, sometimes it leads to a disaster. Sometimes it leads to just a, the most magnificent film ever. So yeah. check this out because they they do their homework on this podcast and they really get into the, the like, the deep, deep, deep dive. And this one was fascinating. Yeah. Did they talk about how this was only filmed in 10 months and yes. all the shit that they were able to put in and get in and the, 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 the effects were like state of the art. So they're figuring it out as they go and it lands. Yeah. Fuck. Incredible. Incredible. Shannon, not only does it land, I will go out there and say it still holds up to the say. Uh, sure, there's um there's a scene where the like the demon dogs are running through the park, and that's like the jankiest uh, like you know special effect. But I found out through the I found out through the podcast me. though the episode they're like yeah that you know what that had to be put in in post they didn't have money for it so they like were like begging like like just give us a couple of shekels so we can finish this. And I'm like, oh, that's why, like, everything else kind of looks amazing, amazing. And then that kind of looks a little off. Yeah. Like, you, you hear these behind-the-scenes stories, and the it just makes you appreciate the film so much more. Because you're like, oh, that's great. Anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, it wouldn't be a podcast unless I promoted another podcast, so. Of course. <laughs> no, that's fun. We, I, I really want to do an episode on that one day, though. That, 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 that's, this movie is so much fun to talk about. We, um, okay, so here's, here's to make your day. So January we have penciled in is horror comedy month. I know it's, nice. I know it's January, but it's going to be here before you know it. Oh, I know. I know. We're flying through our months. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So horror comedy month for January. Woo! 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 Everybody needs some laughs in January, especially if you're here on the Northeast. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know. Seriously. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's the one? next one? Okay. So it actually came out the same day. Gremlins. <laughs> so also 40 years, 1984. Um, obviously another fun one, fun double feature. Um, obviously we don't have to spend too much time on this one, Sean, because we actually talked about Gremlins um, sure did. a few months back. So Sinners, just go backwards and uh, listen to that episode. <laughs> and we, I, I, we, break, I, we break that one down. <laughs> I, I stand behind uh, two bold statements from the Gremlins episode. One, Billy is the worst fucking hero in a horror movie because he does everything wrong within the first two hours. <laughs> Billy, seriously, seriously. is the worst. And my uh, off-the-wall theory, but it could be correct, Billy and Gremlins might be Billy from Black Christmas. Just yeah, <laughs> just, just stating that one I, more time. I remember that theory as well. And I, I, th I th actually, we weren't filming ourselves at the time, but I definitely had a look on my face like, what? <laughs> and and sinners, you could practically hear it. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> that statement definitely. I was just like, wait a second, it totally could be. <laughs> I, was I mean, all it needs is two people to say it's true, and it's true. <laughs> so there you go. I believe it. <laughs> 1984. How lucky were we? How lucky uh, were we? Amazing. Spoiled. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's okay. go to books. Okay, Let's yeah, go to books. Say, now, now I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to like this one. Okay. So let me start with my song. Mm -hmm. Emily Hughes, this week you get a break because we're talking about the sixth annual Summer Scares Reading Program, who, which is um, the uh, promoter this summer is none other than a uh, sinful cut stream boat, uh, tiger beat hall of fame person, Clay McLeod Chapman. <laughs> Clay, Clay has put together with, um, you know, with, with the team, 
Clay's put together incredible, incredible books for the sixth annual Summer <clears throat> Scares Reading Program. Now, sinners, this is for adults, this is for young adults, this is for middle school. So I just want to name the books, not going to do synopsis. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the link into the show notes, but I really want to mention these books to whet your appetite. So for every, uh, there's three sections, the, uh, and every section has three recommendations. So for the adult section, we have This Thing Between Us by Gus Moreno. We have Jackal by Aaron E. Adams. I saw Aaron E. Adams at the Strand in October with Clay, with Nat Cassidy, with Rachel Harrison. Um, uh, Cassandra Thaw was the moderator. And am I missing someone? No, that was it. And it was it was like euphoric. Um, Aaron E. Adams was incredible. What a great speaker. And this novel is just, holy cow. You want a summer read? Read this book. Right. Oh my goodness. And then how, okay, when you're done, last page on that one and, and loved it. <clears throat> Great job, Aaron. Then pick up such sharp teeth by Rachel Harrison, who, uh, did I mention she was there as well? Yeah. So Rachel Harrison has been on like the hottest hand banger after banger after banger. This is her take on uh, werewolves, such sharp teeth. Check it out. Switch gears to young adult. We have all these bodies by, uh, Kendra Blake. Uh, we have Dead Flip by Sarah uh, Farazon. We have Hashtag Murder Trending, love that title, by Gretchen McNeil. Um, middle grade. Okay. <laughs> You're saying to yourself right now, kind of, do we have a lot of middle grade listeners? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> My parents didn't watch what I was doing or no. listening to it. <laughs> Maybe half of our listeners are middle grade. I think so, my mom watches us. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. Ma- hi, mom. <laughs> um, your mom and I are developing quite the social media friendship by the way oh good are you sharing recipes and whatnot <laughs> uh just, uh, we're just sharing our love for each other how about that <laughs> in a strictly platonic way i don't want to get i don't want to be picking my teeth up off the floor in a strictly platonic way <laughs> but your mom is a delight she is. okay so middle grade we have ophie's ghosts uh by uh justin ireland we have uh sorry justina ireland we have uh, b- 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 My Aunt is a Monster by Ramina Yi. And this last one, The Nest by Kenneth Opal. This book, The Nest, look, all those books are fantastic. But I get it that we're talking about a middle grade book here. But I keep hearing all of this incredible, incredible uh, uh, praise for this book, The Nest. Wow. I'm going to get it. And yeah. I'm going to read it. There's they're saying it's the scariest friggin' book that you've read in decades. Holy and it's for hell. Yeah. Huh. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. All right. The clock is ticking, so let me just get going. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to go uh, straight into news. There's not a lot, but some, some interesting. All right. So Maggie Gyllenhaal's The Bride now has Jake Gyllenhaal attached. Yes. I love that. You know, yes. little, hey, hey, bro, want to be in my movie? You betcha. Um, Fantastic Fest announced its second wave lineup. The first wave damn near put me on the floor. This second wave is incredible. That takes place in Montreal, and that is from uh, July 18th to August 4th. It is a long festival. Long, long festival. Um, But yeah, but uh, yeah, look, uh, you know, uh, our Canadian brothers and sisters, uh, you're so lucky to have that uh, right there in your backyard. Um, Paul Giamatti is going to be in the Hostel TV series. Interesting. <clears throat> okay. Love Paul Giamatti. Uh, by the way, if uh, you really want a really good podcast, listen to Chinwag with Paul Giamatti. Really good. Mark Duplass is um, bringing back uh, Creep in a TV series. I, did you ever see Creep? I don't think so. It's 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 found footagey. It's done really well. There's Creep and Creep too. It's very popular. I kind of i liked it you know like pew 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 you know okay people, people go bananas nuts for, for for creep so interesting that he's bringing it to tv i'm hoping it's a limited series because i don't think it can be on a real ongoing thing ty west is headed back to uh, x is headed back to theaters um next week july 18th so yeah. check that out uh check your local listings and go see x on the big screen before maxine comes out and then um, Elle Fanning is starring in the next Predator in yes. Star Wars Badlands. Yes. I just heard about that. Oh, that makes me very, very happy. Um, oh, 
our friends at the Colonial Theater who are hosting Blobfest, where Shannon and I will be from the 12th to the 14th of July, is hosting a Jeffrey Combs retrospective called Beyond Reanimator. And that is the 21st of June to the 22nd of June. And we love Jeffrey Combs and we love his movies, but boy, oh boy, do we love that Colonial Theater. Oh, yeah. Oh, they just do it right. And they are such nice people. And we can't wait for Blobfest. So come and see us. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and um, the last thing I'll mention is that Fangoria, uh, those sweethearts, put out their 24 movies to see this summer. Uh, I wasn't going to go over the whole 24. So go on to Fangoria and check it out. There's a lot. come. We, we've had a real, real good time so far in 24. And for what they're saying is coming, it's going to it's going to this summer. They're not even talking about the fall. This summer is going to be fun. Oh, wow. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Sinners, we have got a bail right now. Um, we switched the lineup. So, from now on, you're going to get the shortcuts. It's going to be dropping on Tuesday, which makes a hell of a lot more sense because it'll give us a chance to promote the guest that we have for Thursday. <laughs> Instead of me endlessly talking about the guests that we're having coming on after <laughs> they've already been there. <laughs> Time travel. <laughs> it, it bends my head so badly. So, you know what? Full disclosure, Shannon's like, hey, why don't we do it this way? Because it's smart. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I didn't say that for the record. <laughs> no, the, this is the real conversation. Hey, dumb, dumb face. <laughs> You're doing everything wrong. Wait, dramatic pause again. <laughs> and she pushed me to the ground and said, we're switching the lineup. <laughs> I love how I made you have to be the podcast. Host. I know. Like, damn. Like, I didn't do that. <laughs> the sweetest person in the world. Yeah. You, I, I do to you what we do to Andy Davidson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. As soon as we got to get out of here, we've got Nicole Wolverton coming up. We're going to talk about the um, the Haunted Jeans movie, Slacks. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah. All right. We're out of here. Take us out of here, Shannon. That, that's a cut. Woo. Yeah. Go get your jeans on and listen to Slacks episode. Yeah. Woo, woo, woo.